Well, blessed Tuesday to you as we come to you with your daily encouragement. And we're continuing with the day together with Dietrich Bonhoeffer's thoughts. And uh, he is in, in the book Life Together. And we are on page 59. And he says, Because it is bound wholly to the word, the singing of the congregation, especially of the family congregation, is essentially singing in unison. Here words and music combine in a unique way. The soaring tone of unison singing finds its soul and essential support in the words that are sung and therefore does not need the musical support of other voices. With one voice let us sing today, in unison both praise and pray, sang the Bohemian Brethren. With one mind and with one mouth, glorifying God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Paul writes in Romans 15, 6, the purity of unison singing, unaffected by alien motives of musical techniques, the clarity unspoiled by the attempt to give musical art in an autonomy of its own, Far from the words, the simplicity and the frugality, the humanness and the warmth of the way of singing is the essence of all congregational singing. This is true, discloses itself to our cultivated ears, only gradually by patient practice. It becomes a question of a congregation's power of spiritual discernment, whether it adopts proper unison singing. This is singing from the heart, singing to the Lord, singing the word. This is singing in unity. Now, over the years, I've seen many different types of music in church. Some maybe we might like, and some maybe we don't care for. There are many different ways that we can praise the Lord. As many as denomination, as many as congregations, I would say, in our Lutheran family, we have a rich diversity as of late. We probably didn't before when there was the advent of contemporary music coming in, probably about the early to mid-80s, I remember. But we have a diversity today. And we are found that we have differences of opinion on what type of music this unified music looks like. I would dare say, too, and I know Dietrich Bonhoeffer probably had not experienced it except in very evil ways, uh, unifying songs that can happen for a rock concert and other things where music and words do unite in, I would say, a loving manner. But he probably saw it in a very evil and sinister way, where words and music were used to unite a country in an evil direction, as he saw as he was writing this with what the Nazi party was doing of his own day. Music and words can influence, they can manipulate, but they also can be expressions of truth. And that's where he gets it right down to brass tacks. Number one, what do the words and music convey? Do they unify or do they divide? And that is a very hard question to ask. I know of my ancestry, I have a great-great-grandfather who belonged to what was called the Church of Christ. And one division that they had in their congregations was whether to even use musical instruments or not. My, grand, my great-great-grandfather was part of the progressive side of it, so to speak. He believed that musical instruments were okay. But there are others of his denomination who specifically said music instruments were of the devil. And so it was back and forth within their denomination. I've not seen that type of thing in the Lutheran church about whether or not to use musical instruments, but I have seen that debate as far as style is concerned, as far as what it conveys. And sometimes they come at very uh, strong emotional moments. Discussions I've had with families during times of funeral planning, also during times of celebrations, where we want to make sure that all age groups and all people are representative. Whether we have just a kid's moment or we incorporate more of the kid's uh, worship into the regular worship and vice versa. There is no set rule except that the words need to unify. 
And that is something that is important to remember. Words need to unify, and specifically the word of Jesus Christ. It is Jesus Christ who brings us together. And that means many times even bringing in many different musical styles, if not musical songs. And sometimes what I would call the best ideal of our modern era is what is called a combined or a hybrid type of worship, drawing in from the many different styles and cultures that can unify under one banner, Jesus Christ. And that, I think, is the most important thing we need to remember. I've been through many phases in my own life. When I was young, I despised the older music. As I've gotten older, I now despise a lot of the younger music in some parts when you catch me on a bad day. And now I've had to learn to adopt and adapt again. And I continue to do that, and so do we if we are honest with ourselves. We might want to be open to new ways of worship. And I challenge that for whatever style that you think is maybe not right in worship, think if you can find a group or a recording that would maybe show you a new way of doing things. And I have worshipped with styles that I'm not particularly excited about, but I found and had to acknowledge Jesus is here. Jesus is being worshipped. Jesus is being acknowledged. And that, I think, is the great challenge that we have in our passages today. Is Jesus being um, supported and praised, or is he not? God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement for you and your loved ones. Take care. God bless. We'll see you tomorrow.